Seriously, I can really await the fight. At the present moment, materialistic 
order life and the main countries that are facilities for sense gratification of the order security and death. Both individual and collectivists would be approaching them. Modern sense gratifiers are oblivious to their inevitable destruction, as stated in the bottom of the last set of the above. Even though the imminent destruction is apparent, they are blind to see it. Being intoxicated by sex and government attachment. Similarly, Bonasar was intoxicated with his material process. He could not believe that he was about to be cut down to size. So this begins a separate story then of uh, the battle uh, with uh, Bonasura, who was a decent because he fought with the Lord. Yet here he is described as beginning as being uh, a good quality, uh, uh, respectable, generous, intelligent, beautiful, etc. Uh, and he was the eldest son of Wali, who, though came coming from a human family, was actually a great devotee. Uh, so, uh, nevertheless, we see that Juan uh, Sura also uh, became very proud. Uh, it's described how he worshipped Shiva, and as a result, he got lessons from Lord Shiva. And uh, consequently, later on, Lord Shiva gave him what was not exactly a benediction but a curse, <laughs> and that he would get defeated by someone who was Shiva. Huh? But Manasura was very foolish, as described here. He bad intelligence, uh, so that uh, he didn't take this uh, so serious, uh, he wanted someone to fight with, and uh, there was no one equal to Lord Shiva in one sense, right, because uh, Shiva was Shiva is supreme, so therefore uh, he felt he was undefeated. Uh, yeah, this is not actually true. So we see Shiva, on the other hand, recognizes that though he has power, uh, Supreme Lord has more power. And later we'll see the battle in which uh, uh, even Lord Shiva uh, fought on behalf of uh, Bonasur. But Bonasur was finally defeated. And uh, Shiva was finally defeated also. So, in other words, uh, although Shiva is very powerful, and therefore it's called Maheshwara, the great Lord, uh, it's explained in the scriptures that actually Shiva's names are actually Vishnu's names mm -hmm. because ultimately the great Lord is Vishnu and she and even the Lord Shiva, which means auspicious. Uh, that comes from uh, Vishnu, who is most auspicious. Uh, so, though uh, Shiva is uh, praised and he has great powers and gives great benedictions, still he's not supreme. So this is a little confusing because at the same time we say Shiva is not a Jiva. So he's also the Supreme Lord. There's only two choices. You're either a Jiva or a Supreme Lord. There's many Jivas, one Supreme Lord. So then if he's not a Jiva, then he must be Supreme Lord. So he said, yeah, he is Ishvara. But he has significantly less powers, and therefore we put him in a different category. So that is why, in their devotion, Rupa Goswami classifies Jeevas as having 50 qualities, Shiva as having 55 qualities, and Vishnu as having 60 qualities, and Krishna having 64 qualities. So therefore, we see that uh, Shiva has less qualities than Vishnu. Vishnu has five extra qualities that Shiva does not have, uh, including creating all the universes. So Shiva does not do that. So that one power is. Another is that uh, from the Lord is manifested countless avatars. Shiva does not do that also. We never see Shiva giving rise to Brahma or Krishna or anything like that. No. So there's special uh, qualities of Vishnu that Shiva does not possess. Nevertheless, he's not a Jiva. He is not conditioned. By material world, he's not in the He doesn't have a material body. 
Don't just strive. His, his body is Satyagananda. He's got an eternal Satyagananda, every useful body. <laughs> Not different from Jivas in the material world who have material bodies. So there's no difference between his uh, soul and body, so to speak. And he's like Supreme Lord. So, therefore, it's a little confusing because he is Supreme Lord, but we don't put him in the same class, we put him in the lower class. And therefore, we even have one opera to think that Lord Shiva and Vishnu are equal. Yeah. Yeah. So, yes, they are in one sense, but again, they're not equal in another sense because the manifestation of uh, Vishnu and Krishna is much more than that of Shiva. Nevertheless, we, we don't as a jiva who is contaminated by material energy, etc. And therefore we see that if jiva is crazy because he can give liberation, if he were to argue with jiva, he could not give liberation. Brahma, who's got a material body, does not give liberation. But yet, jiva does. But then it's also described that actually the real giver of liberation is Vishnu. So ultimately, uh, whatever Shiva can give is bestowed by uh, Vishnu, liberation, or whatever. So, uh, therefore, uh, Vishnu is put in a superior position. Um, and, of course, uh, Shiva, uh, when he appears within this material world, has a particular function. Uh, that is uh, to lord it over Tamuva and everything that Tamarun represents, which is not a very good job in one sense. It's like Yamaraj, <laughs> punishing all the souls of the material was not a pleasant job. <laughs> so uh, she was in control of Tamagun and all the Tamagun living entities. So we see descriptions of how she was hauled around by all these cosmic beings. And uh, he, uh, Tamagun is destructive. So she was in control of destruction of the universe, whereas Brahma is in charge of creation of the universe. He's also in control of ahankara, false ego, ignorance, makes us identify with the material body. Uh, so in this way, uh, Shiva has some job, which is uh, to do with the material world. Because he is connected to Tamagun in this way, then one would attribute him to be Tamagun. But that's not true, because if he's a reward, he's not a diva, he cannot be affected by Tamagun. But due to the association with Tamagun, it looks like he is Tamagun. Well, sometimes, uh, therefore, the Bhagavan says he's a Tamagun, but actually he's pure, not subject to Tamagun. So, to illustrate the difference, we have a verse from the uh, Brahma Samhita, uh, and there it describes that Vishnu is like milk and Shiva is like yogurt. Uh, so what that illustrates is uh, they're more or less the same because uh, yogurt is a transformation of milk. Uh, so it's not like a jiva, uh, the milk is there, the yogurt is there. So he's very intimately related with Krishna, but still, fish, uh, yogurt and milk are not the same. Uh, can't boil yogurt. Falls <laughs> 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 apart. So, Vishnu uh, uh, and Shiva, they're in one sense very similar transformation. She was a transformation, but also a different function. Uh, so, uh, that is illustrated by the yogurt and the milk. Okay. So, uh, in this way, we distinguish the two. Right? And then another example is given that uh, we can take the um, Supreme Lord like uh, um, Deepa, like Lamb. And we can light another lamp, and that lamp has the same power. So this is like the expansions of the Lord, the Avatar forms. They're all one in one sense, they're identical. But then we have another lamp, and we put a little protecting, protective cover over the glass and protect it from the wind. But then the lamp, the glass gets black. 
and therefore the light does not show through. So the other, the, the candle with, or the lamp without the covering is full light, but then with the covering on then significantly less light shows through. Yeah. It's the same light, but then less light shows through. Yeah. So that is like large Shiva as compared to the vicious forms, or Avatar forms, who are like without the covering. So it's the same lamp, but covered over a little more. So therefore we say Shiva has 55 qualities and Vishnu has 60 qualities. So we distinguish between them. Right. So sometimes the scriptures uh, take them equal. So they are equal, let's get their same one. But at the same time, other places take them as unequal, as we see here in Bhagavatam, where Shiva is defeated by Vishnu. So not equal. So both are true, equal and unequal. Uh, so we should not be confused by different statements. Uh, and this teaches us uh, that we cannot, in only one statement from scripture, we have to look at other statements as well. And if there's a contradiction, we need to solve the contradiction. So this is how the contradiction is solved, in one sense, because Shiva is a form of Vishnu, with significantly less powers. There is, however, another case, and that is sometimes a jiva takes the role of shiva. So then that's a little different. He's not exactly a Vishnu form anymore. He can have a material body, he can have faults, he can be contaminated by material energy. So therefore, uh, when it says in scripture that she could be contaminated or by the sun, so strictly property, that could refer to the Jiva, who takes the role of Lord Jiva. On the other hand, Vishnu uh, is always Vishnu, and no Jiva takes the role of Vishnu. <laughs> uh, the only way we have a Jiva in that role is the Shaktivesh Avatar. So the Shaktivesh Avatars uh, also have spiritual bodies and non material bodies. And they also are never contaminated by anything, like Mitzvah uh, Siddhas. Uh, so therefore they can never be uh, accused of being uh, material or associating with material energy also. Uh, so in any case, uh, there is some uh, differentiation between Shiva and Vishnu, or Shiva and Krishna, only because of the manifestation of quality. Uh, so uh, that is illustrated here in this particular story where we see the power of Vishnu is greater, or the power of Krishna is greater than the power of Shiva. Uh, uh, even though in one sense they are the same, one uh, So in this way, uh, we have to have a uh, comprehensive view of the scriptures and take all the statements and all the stories and then we can come to some uh, conclusion. So, in this way, uh, we differentiate uh, between the uh, forms of Shiva and uh, Vishnu. Okay. So, Vishnu often gives uh, benedictions uh, which uh, turn out to be rather unfortunate for the person, the devotee who asks for those things. Uh, and this is one case here. Uh, where Shiva gives a benediction, uh, and then uh, it ends up with a big battle in which uh, Banasur gets his arms cut off and uh, uh, Shiva is defeated. So it ends in some sort of disaster. And we also see the case of uh, Rikasura, Nima, trying to touch where Shiva's head. So uh, sometimes uh, this happens in the uh, Shiva gives benedictions which uh, give very bad results. And therefore, she would himself also says, actually, I'm not the uh, supreme. Vishnu is supreme. Krishna is supreme. Uh, their benedictions always end up with the uh, best results. Uh, so, therefore, we distinguish between uh, different personalities here. In other scriptures, however, we will find very different stories how uh, Shiva is greater than Vishnu. 
I am the uh, like Shiva Puran or Lila Puran, etc. And those Puranas glorify Shiva as the greatest. So this looks very confusing. You know, why is why the scriptures are saying opposites? Now, as I said, we have to see all the facts, all the stories, all the statements in order to come to a conclusion. And the Bhagavatam, we see the opposite. Krishna was the great, and Shiva the secondary. So, explanation is that uh, some Puranas are glorifying Lord Shiva. And these are meant for people in Tamagun, because they are naturally followers of Shiva, he's their protector. So, therefore, Shiva is glorifying in order that they get faith in Lord Shiva and they follow Lord Shiva. As Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, I give people faith by which they can follow David. So, what means it? The scriptures for that is applied. Right? So, we have six Puranas for the people of Tamagun, and many of those uh, scriptures glorify Lord Shiva the Supreme. And then they have stories to illustrate that, where Shiva is greater than Vishnu and everyone else. But if we take the Sattvic Puranas, then we say Vishnu is glorified as Supreme. <laughs> Opposite. And then it either defeats Lord Shiva. Opposite story. So, which do we choose? So the rule is that if there's contrary evidence, we take the stronger evidence. Which is the stronger evidence? Sattvagun Puran is stronger than Rajasic or Tamasic Puran. So, therefore, the statements of Bhagavatam or Vishnu Purana or Padma Purana are more authoritative than the statements of Shiva Puran or Linga Puran or other Puranas. So, we have to look at the statements and the strength of the scripture, etc., the position of the scripture, uh, if there are contrary statements. And then we can come to a final conclusion. So often people just read one scripture and they come to a conclusion based on that. And that is why many people worship Shiva. Uh, they have some authority because they're going to some Quran and then glorifies Lord Shiva as the reason. Therefore they worship him. But uh, we cannot just go to one scripture. We see all the scriptures, and we just see which is the stronger scripture. And we can come to the So, though there are 18 Puranas for people in different Gunas, Bhagavatam is special. It's for everybody in every Guna. Yeah. So, this was the concluding Purana of Vedas under the instructions of Narada Muni. He wrote a Purana for everybody, not just the people in Sakura, whatever, for all the people. Uh, uh, and uh, to uh, give the highest instructions to everyone. Uh, without any compromise. So therefore, we can take the Bhagavatam's uh, statements as the strongest of all. Uh, and so therefore, when we hear stories like this, these stories are stronger than the stories from uh, the Puranas, where Shiva is uh, uh, victorious over others. Uh, so therefore, the story here illustrates how Krishna is superior to uh, Shiva. And of course, Shiva's devotee is like Bhagavad Gita. You see, last year in the two divine qualities, and uh, you will explain that ultimate uh, this uh, evolution gives uh, the Krishna to Shiva. Okay. But we see some, there are some devotees who are Shiva. Once they wish to love Shiva, they go to the Kailash. Why do you follow? Well, Shiva has his own abode also. It's described in the Bhagavad Gita, the beyond the material world, Shiva has his abode. So his abode beyond property, above property. He also has abode in the material world, right? Just as Vishnu is in the He also has abode in the material world, the same as the foreign group of those companies. Or like one within the material world. So Shiva has abode in the material world. He also has abode beyond the material world because he is. Got a spiritual body. So he has the devotees there, uh, Parvati is there, and then he has a whole bunch of devotees there, they serving him there. So if you worship Lord Shiva, you can go there. So he's just the fun one. Yep, he's got an eternal body. Well, he's, he's here, yeah, Lord Shiva understood the intention of Panasur, um, and he saw that Panasur was right. 
he wouldn't destroy the light or he into it. He waited for some time to be destroyed by someone like Krishna. Okay. So so and obviously she was like he's a special master. But how can we understand that you know what he could have done it immediately, but why did he wait for this disturbance? You know, well, in one sense we can see uh, the whole story uh, will illustrate that not only Manasura is inferior, but even Lord Shiva is inferior too. Supreme Lord. That we can say is a part of the pastimes of Shiva and Vishnu. Uh, to illustrate to everyone this supremacy of Vishnu. So therefore they go through this whole uh, incident. Some other, other students like to see when the Bhaktari, Shiva gave a vision to the Bhaktari. Uh, even Sandari, place, also. Here also, even Sandari, Lord Shiva himself be ashamed that by giving like, a benediction to the devotees. Yeah. He is mentioned to be a power. Yeah. Yeah. So, but Lord Shiva also come under the issue under the, uh, of. Yeah. Yeah. So, we can say that uh, this shame and whatever is only in his humility, it's actually his supreme law. And that any mistake he makes also is not a real mistake. No. Uh, just as uh, the Pandavas lament or Arjuna laments, uh, it's not a real lamentation because he's an to say that how can a Pandava lose a thing in his material body? But then through that whole argument, he gets excited. So, therefore, arrangement of the Supreme Lord, so the Yoga Maya operates, and then Arjuna forgets everything and he thinks he's a material body. So, it's only arrangement of the Lord for certain purposes. So, same with uh, Shiva and others. They're perfect devotees, and but they also consider themselves not in such a high category as others. And, uh, and then the Lord will sometimes put them into situations where they appear to be ignorant for certain aspects. So this list, a uh, standard list. So we have Vishnu Purana, Padma Purana, Guru Purana, Narada Purana, Mahavira Purana. Uh, Sattvic ones, and then uh, we have uh, Rajasa Puranas, like Brahma, Varta Purana, Brahma Purana, Brahma Purana, uh, in the uh, Rajasa category, in Shiva Purana, Linga Purana, uh, Skanda Purana, uh, I think uh, Matsya Purana also, and Bhavana Purana, something in uh, Varaha Purana, or Tamaka. I don't even go for them, there's no contradiction. So they have some true statements and some exaggerated statements. So we have to see which are which. Not all the fallen souls can get the knowledge of things. Though there are so many classifications of Puranas, but different kinds of souls. Still, all the souls doesn't get that message. So if that being the case, how Chaitanya and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was saying that the uh, whole world can be saved, or the, all the all the sins can be saved from Well, the purpose of Bhagavatam is to tell everybody not to follow the system of worshipping a different god of different deities, but everyone should worship Krishna. And then Lord Chaitanya comes with the holy name, which is open for everyone, so that everyone can worship Krishna. And no matter who they are, they can become qualified for Bhagavatam and advance the Bhagavatam through the Chaitanya. No, 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 all the souls can be saved from them. Some are more gradual than others. But the chances are opened up by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Maharaj, we heard in the class that Shiva does not give rights to Avatar. So, what about Rudra? Rudra. Oh, well, he has 11 Rudra expansions. Uh, but he does manifest uh, Matsya or Maparana or Shirmana and other forms like that. <laughs> yeah, Shiva can expand himself definitely because he is Ishvara and he's in every universe also. It's not just one universe, that universe is the Shiva in every universe. So there's billions of universes and billions of Shivas there. And then Shiva expands into 11 forms within the universe. So he's got extraordinary power, but not as much as Vishnu. One of his qualities to distinguish from Jiva is he does have extraordinary powers that Jiva's own. So this is one who expands himself in the world of the universes. 
It's not and Maharaj, any other example where Shiva can give liberation? Where Shiva gave liberation? Any uh, example? Uh, I can think of it. Probably if you go to the Puranas, the Tamasic Puranas will give many examples there. Bhagavad doesn't show any examples, but it's mentioned very often in Amrita that he gives liberation. People in Thailand, Sivata, are they liberated? The real and material world, they go there. Even in the material world, they go there, they should be. Of course, there could be some borderline cases. Hare Krishna. Uh, this uh, Shiva is considered the great Gopi. Still, why does he perform such pastimes where he has he fights with Krishna in spite of knowing that he's supreme? Well, Lord. we find even great about the like Krishna day fighting on the opposite side. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, this is an arrangement of the Lord in certain pastimes. That's all. So we see both cases: Shiva as the servant of the Lord, Shiva meditating on Vishnu, and then Shiva fighting, or we find Indra. Uh, who is appointed by the Lord to rule over the heavenly planet. He's a servant of the Lord, and the Lord is his younger brother, Day. But yet, he fights with Krishna, and fire got the flower, and over that they listen. But we have, oh, we can only explain that by the arrangement of the Lord for certain pastimes. So we cannot criticize the payment uh, of Lord Shiva. But in terms of the number of qualities, we see one side from the by 60, 64, but we also see Krishna's qualities are Yeah. So that's just to give us a, a broad perspective uh, to show the difference between them and why we put Krishna in a different category from all the other forms of the Lord, and again, why we put uh, Vishnu separate from Shiva, or from Shivas. So we, we can enumerate some special qualities. Mm -hmm. It's not every quality, but uh, outstanding qualities, or within the, these qualities, and you could subdivide and make more categories. Okay. Uh, is one Shiva or many Shiva? Huh? Is one Shiva or many Shiva? Well, there are many forms of Shiva, because in each universe is destroyed, and that's Shiva. But it's actually one Shiva, like there's many forms of Vishnu. But it's also one one Vishnu, not many Vishnu's, it's one. But he has many forms. <coughs> The Suranas got their names after Yasna Guru, then what it was? I think when, when Yasna wrote them, they got their names. Yantra Yasna Shri 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 Sh